Hey, welcome to the Specialty Coffee Association online training. The SCA represents a global community of coffee enthusiasts and professionals who are devoted to continuous learning and always improving the practices of our industry. It is my goal through the resources found at www.sca.training that I can share with as many people as possible the great coffee training provided by the SCA alongside preparatory lessons for all SCA certifications. These certified modules include Introduction to Coffee, Green Coffee, Coffee Roasting, Sensory Analysis, Coffee Brewing, and Barista Skills. My name is Adam, but I also go by the Chinese name Huang Peng, depending on which side of the globe you find me training. Since 2015, I have been an AST, that's an authorized SCA trainer, and part of that training involved immersion into Mandarin Chinese. I took the bulk of my courses and examined examinations in a second language. Now I realize that not everyone listening today is a native English speaker, but that's okay. Coffee is a great avenue to provide engaging content for anyone who wishes to improve their English language and learn more about coffee, with slides, videos, recordings, PDF transcripts, and more provided on our website. Coffee and English learners can double their learning. As we go through our many lessons, we'll cover three levels of content, foundation, intermediate, and professional. Aside from the introductions course, the other five modules are offered at three levels for a combined 16 possible certifications. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to tell your friends and help them move forward in their coffee training as well. Share the links or the website and uh, spread the word because for now the content is free. Let's get started with the general details for our course today as provided by the Specialty Coffee Association. I should also add, if you haven't already tuned into the Sensory Curriculum or the Introduction to Specialty Coffee, uh, the audio content, I encourage you to listen to those two episodes before or after this one. The purpose of this module or course aim is to expose and sensitize students on the notion of specialty versus non-specialty coffee. This should enable them to recognize the core concepts of sensory analysis and explain why and how coffee professionals use it in the coffee industry. Broad focus will be put on identifying, describing, and discriminating objectively aroma, taste, and body in coffees. Students will be introduced to the SCA cupping protocol and methodology and reflect on the qualitative dimension of this evaluation methodology. This course is really great, uh, whether you've had some exposure to coffee or very little. If you've had very little in terms of professional cupping, then this is a great way to align yourself with global practice. If you've already had some experience or maybe you've picked up some local habits from a roastery or a cafe, this is a good course to align you to the SCA, the Specialty Coffee Standard, which again is a global standard. Today's sensory assessment, um, there are two parts, the written section and the practical section. So uh, just reading on the left column there, for the written section you should be able to explain sensory analysis and why it is important in coffee, specialty versus non-specialty coffee, uh, physiology of the human body and its role in sensory assessment, basic taste and aromas, defining taste and body in coffee communicating your results, understand cupping protocols, and sensory equipment used. For the practical section, you should also, like the written, achieve at least 60% to pass. In the first practical, there will be a solutions exercise. This is pretty fun, and you should be able to identify six different solutions. They'll be clear, looking like water, tasting blindly, salt, sweet, sour, bitter, umami, and plain water. Can you distinguish? Practical two is a pairs test. So you should be able to distinguish higher perceived quantities of say bitterness or acidity in a pair of brewed coffees. So again, you will be blind not knowing whether it's a pulp natural Brazil or a washed Sumatra or a uh, Ethiopian. So understanding by yourself uh, tasting to distinguish the bitterness, acidity, sweetness, differentiations between the pair.
On practical three, you should identify the six different categories of coffee aroma that are presented and uh, these again will be darked out. You'll be in a dark room and you won't be able to tell by looking, but identifying those categories. On practical four, you'll need to demonstrate how to properly prepare and perform a, cu a cupping of a sample coffee. So again, learning and performing. All right, sensory skills. This is foundation level course and let's dig in. Understanding and developing the habit of sensory analysis. My hope for all of you listening is that you can learn how to tune in to your own senses. Approaching this course and other sensory aspects, many people, a lot of my students in the past, they would come in with a good sense of fear and they would say things like, I've never had a good sense of taste or my nose isn't very sensitive or I'm bad at tasting and describing coffee. Just come in with some fear and negative past experiences. In fact, I really want to encourage you just to, you know, push those thoughts out of your mind. I want to debunk them because they're lies. You can be a great coffee sensory analyst. And by understanding your own body, using those sensory skills that are learned and practiced over time, it becomes a discipline and a habit. So this is a course and it's a skill for normal people just like you, who want to learn how to tune into what their body, what their mouth, what their nose is sensing, and what their, what their brain is interpreting through these sensory signals. Now, if you haven't had a lot of experience or if you haven't had a good coach, that's just where you need to build a foundation. You need to build a catalog from which to draw. So, in fact, the course definition of which you should take note is uh, for sensory analysis, Sensory evaluation is a scientific discipline. It uses humans as a measurement instrument to describe coffee sensation. And we'll come back to that again, but it's worth repeating. So as the definition, sensory evaluation is a scientific discipline using humans as measurement instruments to describe coffee sensations. Okay, so why is tasting coffee essential? One, it's important for the coffee industry to do things like set prices, control quality, and ensure safety. There are many reasons. Second, it's important for you, not just the coffee industry, but it's important for you to enjoy your food and your drink, to enjoy your coffee, and to keep you safe. Much research has been done about where and how we taste, how we perceive sensations on our tongue. So. I understand, and while not isolated to any one region on your tongue, this is just a traditional diagram that was used to help start to identify some of the uh, more general regions where you would sense bitter, sour, salty, sweet. Okay, so in fact, our entire tongue can sense uh, any of these sensations or a myriad of sensations combined, but uh, these four general regions are typically more sensitive and uh, specifically for the human tongue to perceive. So starting at the front, uh, a general stronger sense of sweet sensation, moving back further along the sides, more sensitivity to salty sensations, a little further back, uh, sensitivity to sour sensations, and then uh, furthest back, a little more sensitivity to bitterness. Now recently, umami has been uh, scientifically identified and by recently I mean it was first identified in about a little over a hundred years ago in 1908 and uh, forgive me the name but Kikune Ikeda a professor of Tokyo Imperial University he found that glutamate was responsible for the palatability of things like broth in soup or kombu seaweed he noticed that the taste of this kombu dashi, a dish that was distinctly different from sweet and sour and bitter and salty, so he named it umami. Umami in Japanese translates as savory or even good tasting. However, there's no real clear consensus yet um, where umami might be most recognized or perceived on the tongue. Again, it's sensed in many places, and uh, like the other 
flavors should not be identified to one region alone. So in regard to coffee, what two flavors might always be present? If you had to guess from these four. In all coffee beans at all time, uh, bitterness should always be present and acidity or the sour taste should always be present. Uh, hopefully it uh, seldomly is or seldom is it salty or very little uh, perceivable salty taste and uh, sometimes in poorer coffees there will not be sweetness or in uh, as a result of roasting but bitterness and acidity should always be present okay going a little deeper here into taste and flavor perception I know there's more information here than is needed but uh, you know, as you prepare for intermediate and eventually professional levels, this provides a good baseline and framework. So there's a lot more information here. However, it's helpful. And uh, regarding taste buds, okay, so there are between 2,000 and 5,000 taste buds located on the back and front of the tongue. Others are located on the roof of the mouth, sides and back of the mouth, and even in your throat. So each taste bud contains, uh, right of these 2,000 to 5,000, each taste bud contains 50 to 100 taste receptor cells. So imagine that's uh, tens and uh, hundreds, 2,000 times 100, 200,000, hundreds and thousands of taste buds. So <clears throat> it, from most sensitive to least sensitive, we can talk about it in this way. And if you look at the back of the tongue there, uh, bitterness, again, it could be anywhere, but bitterness is more s the most sensitive. And then um, on a scale, uh, becoming less sensitive, sour, salty, and sweet being the least sensitive. So I'll talk more about bitterness because it's most sensitive to humans. And it's really a defining characteristic in coffee. Like we said, all coffee will have bitterness and sour or acidity. So there are several classes of bitter compounds which may vary in chemical makeup. Okay, Again, this is deeper than needing to know, but helpful. The human body has evolved and it's particularly sophisticated and it, in its sense of bitterness. The reason why we can distinguish between many different types of bitter compounds, uh, many believe is an evolutionary uh, response, a physiological response, because the role of bitterness in human survival is pretty common that most bitter tasting compounds are hazardous or poisonous uh, to our health. So humans learned very early on that we should recognize and avoid bitter substances. If you believe we were created by a god or a being, um, you know, this would be the evidence of smart and intelligent creation and design. So to return to my first point, uh, the defining characteristic is bitterness in coffee, right? And so where does that come from? Caffeine, primarily caffeine and roasting. So caffeine is, or bitterness, is the defining characteristic of caffeine. If you remove caffeine from coffee, decaffeinated coffee, it's actually much less bitter. Uh, and then, again, uh, you can see even here the threshold for tasting. These are parts per million. Um, from bitterness to sour to salty to sweet. So we'll pay attention to these further. And uh, I'd like to point out in the center here, what is gustation? Okay, so the gustation of flavors is the sensation of basic taste in coffee. So the word gustation will come up more than once and you should be familiar that gustation is the sensation of basic taste in coffee. Down below here, if you'd like to practice at home or if you're uh, giving a demonstration, um, you would prepare with uh, prepare solutions. You can prepare for your own practical exam by adding uh, sugar for sweetness in water, uh, salt, uh, sea salt, sodium chloride. For acidity, it would be citric acid that is safe to consume. For bitterness, it would be caffeine or quinine. And for umami, something like MSG. So all of these will provide a, a clear, drinkable. Uh, compound that you can practice with. Alright, that'll end part one and uh, next we'll move on to part two.